ABC Sports welcomes you to Burger King College Football Today. Burger King, home of that legendary flame broiled taste. If you ask us, it just tastes better. It's football, big game time with big time rewards and almost always some of those big games played in the big house at Michigan. A glorious new year for the Wolverines. You just won the national championship. But the start of the season was sour with losses to Notre Dame and Syracuse. Since six straight wins, defense and more defense. Next three top. Penn State with its top, top defense. And the Lions' long ball offense. If November put up time. The Penn State Nittany Lions, six and one, ranked tenth in the BCS Bowl, higher in others. The Michigan Wolverines, six and two. They've won six straight. They're ranked twenty-second. The Big Ten standings, three teams are undefeated in the conference. Penn State has lost only to Ohio State. Michigan plays all three in play with Penn State. It has always been of paramount importance in Big Ten football to win the conference championship. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to the Big House in Ann Arbor. If it is still so that a Big Ten football team wants that conference title more than any national championship, then we should have ourselves a cracking good game today in Ann Arbor. Now, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Back to you in just a moment. Of course, in this game, Penn State looking for revenge. They got clobbered by Penn State last year. They did each other in this one. The offense perhaps the questions and two very similar quarterbacks Penn State Kevin Thompson and Tom Brady of Michigan very similar both first year starters both fought off tough competition early on putting up the same kind of numbers I think the game is going to swing on which one of these guys rises to the top because points will be hard to come by today all right that game coming up also part of our double header but right now we want to take it live out to the Kennedy Space Center where you can see the space shuttle Discovery is landing John Glenn aboard 36 years removed from his first trip, becoming the first American to circle the Earth in the Mercury series. They have landed. They, of course, carried out dozens of tests on John Glenn. 77 years of age, just a tremendous. There's some concern, or there was, as they landed, perhaps there was a problem with the chute. They do not need that to land, as you can see right now. During the takeoff on October the 29th, there was some damage to the Discovery, some concern. They get it in. The weather, of course, a problem because of Hurricane Mitch. If they were not able to land here, they would have gone to California. But as you can see, the Space Shuttle Discovery is now touching down. As I mentioned, all of the tests carried out on John Glenn and the six other members of the Space Shuttle crew. ABC News will have plenty more on this later on, but again, congratulations to John Glenn. As you can see, the Space Shuttle Discovery has landed safely more at halftime from ABC News. And we're going to get you out to our game. It's Michigan and Penn State from Ann Arbor after this message, and we're from your ABC stations. Where are the front lines of terrorism? Tomorrow at 11. One of the great scenes in college football. The Michigan Wolverines coming into the big house to play the Penn State Nittany Lions today. And let's turn to Bob Greasy and get his perspective on this matchup. And I'll bet you start with the letter D. If you like defense, <laughs> you've come to the right place. Two of the best defenses in the country. Penn State at the end of last year, their defense was in the shambles. This year, they've rebuilt it. They're very aggressive, and they're attacking style of defense. Michigan carried their, the defense carried them to a championship last year. They're back this year. And usually when you have low-scoring games and defensive games, turnovers and special teams will come into play somewhere along the way. 
on the field, our colleague Lynn Swan. Thank you, Keith. Now, we truly expect this game to be in the trenches, but there is one acrobat on this team, on this in this game, Ty Streets, number 86 for Michigan, who could break it wide open. And he began to pave his road to a successful 98 with the Rose Bowl last year. He had a breakout game, scoring two touchdowns. He built a highway that no one could catch up to him. Now he comes into the 98 season with being the go-to receiver. He's a one-man for Michigan who can make the big play. Now keep in mind also that the last two weeks, he has been phenomenal. He has scored touchdowns, he's made the big play, he's kept this offense in it. Now we do expect it to be a low scoring ball game. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, keep your eye on Ty Streets. He can go up in the air and get the ball. Keith? All right, Swanee, and they're certainly gonna need him against this tough defense of Penn State today because this is a statement game, as Sam Sword said yesterday for Michigan. The series history is not long, as you can see. Penn State having won both times here. The home field hasn't meant a thing in this particular series since the Nittany Lions came into the Big Ten. We may well have a crowd record here at the Big House today. It could be well over 111,000 because of the additional seats have been put in here. Michigan has won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half, and uh, the field is dry. The temperature is in the middle 40s. It's almost a perfect day for a college football game. The referee, again, is Jim Kimmerling. And uh, Joe Fraterner, of course, is the walking, talking, living legend. You can't say enough about the man from any perspective. Uh, across the way is a man that I hold in high esteem, uh, like so many others, Lloyd Carr, who is in his fourth season as the coach of the Michigan Wolverines, though he has been here the better part of a quarter century, having gone back to the days of Bo Schimbeckler's staff. Let me give you the officials as we wait for the teams to come out. Jimmy Kimberling, we told you, the referee. Carl Paganella, the umpire. Linesman is Mike Spanier. Line judge is Wilson Jackson. Field judge Tom Clark. Side judge is Tom Bryan. And the back judge is Jim Lapatina, who's all right. Last time we saw Jim last week, he got run over. <laughs> but he's, <laughs> he did. He's all right for the game this week. They play on real grass. Penn State, of course, is in the white, and uh, number eight is Eric McCoo, who's going to start today at tailback. He's deep to receive the kick, a freshman, along with another freshman, Eddie Drummond. Yes, that's correct. Two freshmen waiting for the kickoff, and the ball is on its way and going toward the corner. Bounces back inside. It is picked up by Drummond, and Eddie Drummond will come out to the 20-yard line where it'll be first down. Chile's starting lineup now for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Along the front, the big hitter is 328-pound Floyd Wedderburn, one of the top offensive tackles in the country. Very good. The wide receivers, these guys are becoming long ball players as quarterback Kevin Thompson grows into the job. Fields and Jones are the burners. Joe Nastasi back with a broken wrist but playing. Cordell Mitchell is out today. He's hurt. Freshman Eric McCoo goes to tailback. Chris Everly comes back for his second week. And he will be available for duty today as we have the first play of the game. It's going to be a pass. Thompson cranks it up and goes deep down the field. It is incomplete intended for Corey Jones. Jones was jammed just enough by James Whitley along the line of scrimmage and couldn't break free. The Michigan defense, this is the strength of this ball club, but they don't seem to get real nasty until the second half for some reason. The linebackers, number 93, Sam Sword, leads the team in tackles for a third straight year. Jones and Gold, very fast. Copenhaver is back. The defensive backs, well, they seemed a while to get a, adjusted to the departure of Charles Woodson, but they are better now, and Marcus Ray has returned from suspension. The Lions try it over the right side. They've got a couple of yards on the play. McCoo's 5'10", 195-pounder from Red Bank, New Jersey. And so now the butterflies will start to go away a little bit. This is a big ball game for these two teams. Big in many, many ways, and perhaps particularly so for what happens when we finally reach December. The ball is on the 23-yard line, where it is third down and long. Six Wolverines along the front. 
They almost stepped into the neutral zone. I don't see a flag. The pressure coming. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, said, we are going to go after him. And Joaquin Bazell got there for the sack. Michigan moved into an eight-man front that confused the front of uh, Penn State. And Joaquin Fazell gets the sack, the first sack of the ball game. Pat Pidgeon, the good punter, is in. Marcus Knight is waiting for it. Should get good field position out of this. Knight circles, lets it drop, and it takes a Penn State roll. You must catch it when it's coming downfield, dragging its tail like that. You know it's going to roll straight ahead, and he gave up about 12 yards on not catching it. Chile starting lineup for Michigan. The front had some losses to injury and to graduation. It has not had the pop of a year ago. The wide receivers, as Lynn Swan said a moment ago, streets has been spectacular this season. In the backfield, there have been times when the new quarterback, Tom Brady, has been great, but other times when he has not seen the field well. And Clarence Williams is back in a good form now and back on the field playing and starting at tailback. The Penn State defense, the front seven, will wreck your parlor. These people in the front are relentless, and the linebackers are the wrecking ball. Short, Morris, and Arrington, they're spectacular. The starters in the secondary, all under six feet in height. That means tight end time, I would think. Now, with these guys up front, there are days when you think your grandpa could play in the defensive secondary <laughs> at Penn State. Uh, good point. Second down and eight. That's Knight going in motion, and Brady's pass is down the middle to the tight end, Jeremy Tuman. And Tuman will pick up a first down at the 48-yard line. Talking with Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, the last couple of days, he says, we've got to get the tight ends more involved in the offense. There's an old saying around uh, football, either college or pro, that if you can throw the ball to your tight end and your backs, you can move the ball down the field. Put it on the 49-yard line for the Wolverines' first first down of the day. Give it back to Clarence Williams. He's finding daylight over the right side. He's running in behind the big guys on the right, and he found just enough room to pop past. Frazier, Jansen. Jansen, of course, is the offensive team captain, and Williams shows some quickness now. They've missed him. He started a couple of games early, uh, and then... They kind of rotated that uh, tailback position between uh, Fargus and uh, Anthony Thomas, but uh, they need somebody in there with some conviction to bust it up in there. Second down and a short three. Back to Clarence Williams, up the middle he goes. And they're knocking the Lions off the line of scrimmage right now. Mac Morrison, linebacker, made the tackle, moved the chains. Well, Michigan has not played well offensively in the last three or four games. From behind the defense, 43 is Brandon Short. He gets wiped out. There's a nice hole there. But Michigan has not run the ball well in the last couple of weeks. Their offense has been sputtering. And Lloyd Carr said, we've got to play better to win this game. Double tied in. Campbell and Tooman both in there for protection. Brady rolls. He's looking for streets. Goes underneath the Tooman. And Tooman makes his second catch of this initial possession with Derek Fox making the tackle. Well, I said coming in to uh, Ann Arbor this week, Keith, that I don't recognize this offense. They're not throwing it to the tight end. They're not using the bootleg, the misdirection. That was a play that they used all of last year, a little bootleg misdirection. And talking with uh, Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator of Penn State, he says they're not doing the same thing they did last year. That doesn't mean he didn't prepare for it, but that play was a, a staple in their offense last year. First down on the 25-yard line. Wolverines take it and stick it in the end zone. Look out. This time they come hard and they get him. Brad Schioli takes Williams behind the line of scrimmage for a yard loss. This is a stubborn bunch, that front seven for Penn State. Here's a look at the pass distribution of the offense for Michigan this year. Look at look at the wide receivers, how many more passes they're catching by percentage. 62% of the passes this year versus 34% last year. Second down, 11. Passes away, batted down at the line of scrimmage. So the big, tall defensive lineman stepped up, slapped it aside. It was David Fleischauer, number 95, a junior out of Clemens, North Carolina. Every time I think of Clemens, North Carolina, I think of Bermuda Run. 
Well, come on now. A lot of snap hooks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this defense of Penn State ranked uh, eighth. That's it. Now they're ranked 11th in the nation. They have not given up a touchdown in the first quarter this season. Third down, 11 for Michigan. Pressure coming. Gets it away. He's got his man wide open. Aaron Shea, touchdown. Shea's first touchdown of the season. He was uncovered and walked in. I think you give Brady some credit too, Bob, for hanging in the pocket because well, they were coming you're, after him. You're exactly right, and you give the pass protection and the backs for picking up the blitz some some uh, credit on, on that also. Kick is down the highway, and so on the initial possession, the Michigan Wolverines. Stick it in the end zone for a touchdown. The numbers on your scoring drive, very impressive by the Michigan Wolverines. First touchdown, the Nittany Lions have given up in the first quarter this year. The deep people for Penn State, Eric McCoo, Eddie Drummond. And doing the kicking is Jay Feely for Michigan. He got all of this one. It'll carry well into the end zone and down. Come out to the 21st down line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Here's Aaron Shea lined up as a fullback. He's just going to run a swing right down the sideline. The key block is on Arrington, the linebacker, by the halfback, uh, Williams, Clarence Williams. He gets the block, gives him time to throw the ball, and an excellent throw and catch, Aaron Shea. So now it's Seahawk. There's LeVar Arrington sitting there. There's the man who scored the touchdown and the man who threw it to his right. Let's see what the Lions can do if they can answer. They tried deep on their first play of the ball game. They go the same way, and this time, Corey Jones, number seven, turns to look for the ball, and he heard it go by. Incomplete. I think the key to this game is Kevin Thompson for the Nittany Lions, anyway. He's been playing well last three ball games, completing 60% of his passes. And uh, Joe Paterno told us last night, he says, to, to beat Michigan, he says, we're going to have to throw the football. Marcus Ray is on the field for the first time in six games for the Wolverines. Suspended for contact with an agent. Aaron Harris now is in the backfield for Penn State. Aaron, number 25. Still looking for some of that speed that was lost when he had the knee reconstruction. Pressure coming from the backside. Football, the ball is rolling on the ground. The scramble is on, and Michigan has it. James Hall looped around and got to him, and the Wolverines have made a huge break for themselves. James Hall, the bottom of your screen, number 56, just beats the tackle. That's Blick. Michigan came in lethargic from their last three or four ball games. They had not been playing well offensively. The defense creates a turnover. And Michigan is a team here that Keith seems like they have played well all year. Yep. Lloyd Carr right. said yesterday, he said, can we turn it on and you turn it off when you want to? He was concerned about playing well today. Deonte Jones, the recovery back to Clarence Williams, who's given him some pop at that tailback position here in the early going. The Nittany Lions take him down after a pickup of about three yards. We are at 10 minutes to play in the first quarter. Michigan is leading 7 to nothing and threatening. The ball resting at the 11-yard line of Penn State. Second down, short eight. By that, I mean it's a little bit less than eight yards. Brady hands it over the left side. Goes Clarence. Penalty flag. Jim Kimmerling will define it for you. Big call. Frustration early in the ball game. Watch number 11, Arrington. Keep your eye on number 11. 
Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. Half the distance. Uh, he just kind of shoved him, but uh, I think uh, Jim Kimmerling, the referee, is going to settle this game down immediately, yep. and you won't find a better official in all of college sports than Jim Kimmerling. I bet you if he asked LeVar, though, he'd say, the man was in my shirt. I couldn't get loose. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> you're probably right. It is first and goal for Michigan. The ball is at the Penn State three-yard line after that personal foul call. Brady loops it up. High streaks. And it is incomplete. David Macklin covering on the play. And Macklin has had his glory here in 1996. He played a huge ball game for Penn State. And here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, he's one of the great cover guys playing in college football today. He went up against David Boston earlier this year. Excuse me. He's going against Ty Streets here. The ball goes up in the air. Ball could have been a little higher to give him Street a chance, but Macklin is going to be on you very close. He does not like to give you much of a cushion, Keith. He's given away eight inches to uh, Streets, too. Second down, they go back to Williams, and Williams will get down uh, around the two-yard line, maybe the one. Aaron Evan Coleman, a freshman uh, fullback, is in the field now for Michigan. A 258 pounder. They need the heft at that fullback spot to open some cracks for Williams. And Clarence couldn't find one that time. He got only a yard. So it'll be third down and goal from the two. This would be a big defensive stop for Penn State, Keith, if they can hold Michigan to just a field goal. Their spirits will soar. Officially, it'll go down as one yard, but it's about a yard and a half. And Brady throws over the head of Jeremy Tooman in the back of the end zone. Brad Schioli is calling for a hold call against Michigan. Doesn't get it. And uh, it'll bring up fourth down for the Wolverines. It's tough to run a play action on the goal line when it's third down and two, Keith, because the defense is really looking for it. He did the smart thing there and just throwing it out of the end zone. It'll bring in the kicking team. Jay Feely will be in for the chip shot. It'll be called an 18-yard try. Brady will hold it. Penn State has called time. One, they want to talk. Two, they want to freeze the foot of Jay Feely. We'll be right back. We're back for a field goal try of 18 yards now from Jay Feely. Tom Brady will hold it, trying to make Michigan's lead over Penn State 10 to nothing. It is fourth down on the one-yard line for Michigan. They'll take the points, thank you, if they can get them. Kick is up and good. So 10-0, the Wolverines at 8.44 to go in the first quarter. Surprised? Well, it certainly looks like a different Michigan football team in the early going. 20. Okay, Penn State behind 10-0. Joe Paterno is not the kind of head coach that is going to panic or drastically alter what he's planning to do in the ball game just because he's gotten down by 10 early. And this is not a Penn State team that can put the ball in the air and just go out of their norm and play catch-up. But keep in mind, Michigan's defense has gotten the rap justifiably about not being able to handle the option. He does have a, another course of action to take, and that is number 12, Rashard Casey. We know what an athlete he is. We know he's got great speed. We know he could probably run some option. I don't think it would be a departure from his game plan. I think he has to have a little bit of a game plan with Casey coming in to run some option just to keep Michigan on their toes, Keith. Well, I asked about that, Swanee, and you know what? I never really got an answer. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Hayden Epstein, a freshman from Cardiff, California, will kick off. He's a uh, young'un, but he's got a bright future. He has a powerhouse of a leg. Like that. So it'll come to the 20. The show the New York Times calls the best new show of the season is for tonight. You can see a brand new episode this Tuesday at 9.30, 8.30 Central, right after Spin City on ABC. Beautiful day. 
for a game of college football. It really is. Mid 40s. Dry. Four of the first five plays for the Nittany Lions have been passes. They go to McCoo, trying to get to the outside. The freshman has quickness, and he's up across the 25, near the 27. Good play. Tommy Hendricks, the tackle. Michigan has played five games in the Big Ten the last five weeks, Keith, and this is in Big Ten only. They, they lead in total defense, pass defense, and scoring. They've only allowed one touchdown in the last 18 quarters. So this defense that didn't play well the first two games of the year against Notre Dame and Syracuse has really come on. Joe Nastasi is in. Two weeks ago, suffered a broken wrist. He's got a cast on it. He's practiced. He's playing. Shafi Fields was the man in motion. Go back to McCurry behind the line of scrimmage. Eon Gold. He's only 213 pounds, but he's blazing quick at linebacker. Some of the Michigan uh, faithful will tell you that Ian Gold did not play against Syracuse in that option because he has the speed. And had he played, maybe he would have made some difference in that game. Number 20 to the left side of your screen. Ian Gold just going to get right through, miss the block of Fagan, and trip up the running back. Ball is on the 26-yard line, a loss of a yard on the play. It is third down and four now. Hobson looks to throw, gets it away. Oh, great catch by Concho Brown, the tight end. Oh, showtime with Concho. Concho came in with only 11 receptions. Penn State doesn't go to their tight ends that much, but uh, you're right, uh, partner. This is a great catch. And a big catch because it keeps possession of the ball for the Lions. Put the ball at the 44-yard line, move the chains, and the first down. Michigan showing blitz again as Gold creeps up. Thompson's back, has the time, throws the ball, and it is incomplete. And now you get a penalty call. It's going to go against Andre Weathers. Joe Nastasi was out there, and apparently the man on the side felt that uh, Weathers might have pulled Nastasi down. And he may have, for all I know, because that man's a lot closer to it than I am. <laughs> you know, they're right most of the time. Joe Nastasi means a lot to this football team. First off, he's a senior. He's the go-to guy. He's the possession man. He's the jack em up guy in the huddle. Playing with a broken wrist. Oh. And he's a tough competitor. Pass interference on the defense. Spot ball. First down. Ball goes to the Michigan 42 now, and Penn State is on the Wolverine side of the field for the first time today. We get some defensive changes. Diesel is out. Freisinger is in. That's one along the trenches. Long count. Requires patience. Hand the ball off to the tailback, Chris Eberle who is in the lineup now for the Nittany Lions. Everly number 23, a 216-pound senior. He didn't pass all the physical tests when he came back. He didn't play until he passed it. He played last week. Yeah, I think he missed about uh, five or six ball games. Cordell Mitchell is not playing today uh, because he has a little bit of an injury, a shoulder injury. They call it a stinger. And this, uh, so they're a little thin there at the running back position. Second down and... Uh, very short by. Blitz coming. Pick it up. Passes away. Good catch by Corey Jones. They give him the catch at the 21 yard line of Michigan. And Thompson had some zip on it. Sam Sword was coming down the middle of the highway and almost got to Thompson. Good call by Fran Ganner. Get your quarterback out of the pocket. Watch McCoo number eight pick up Sword right there. Quarterback gets out of the pocket, sees the sight lines are good. Fran Ganner doing a nice job. He sees that uh, Michigan is blitzing. Get him out of the pocket some. Go on first down. Sarah Melly is the man moving. Give the ball to McCoo. Runs in behind Sarah Melly, and McCoo will pick up 
better part of four yards on the carry. Here's 20. Important drive for Penn State. Uh, not just moving the football down the field, but guys like Kuncho Brown and Corey Jones are making catches for Kevin Thompson. When you have a young quarterback and he's not going to get every ball on the money, the receivers have to step up and make some catches. They don't all have to be of the spectacular variety, diving over people, but they have to go up or get down to make those tough catches, and he's gotten two of them so far. Second down and six. Pressure coming, Hall's after him, passes away, incomplete. So James Hall forces Thompson to go early on the throw to Concho Brown, and is incomplete. Brown was available, but the pass missed. And that was a very nice play by James Hall, not to take the fake and not go away from it, put pressure on Thompson and not allow him to complete this ball. Nice defensive play right there. James Hall making his 20th start today. For the Wolverines. Aaron Harris is back in the backfield now. Thompson back. Passes away and it is incomplete. Nastasi was over there. Shafi Fields is over there and perhaps indecision by both. Nobody was open. Tell it like it is, Hoss. Come on. <laughs> Quarterback had nobody to throw it to. He threw it in twixt them. <laughs> <laughs> 5.03 remaining in the first quarter with Michigan leading Penn State 10 to nothing. It is fourth down. So Travis Forney, the place kicker from Lock Haven, PA, walks in. He still doesn't have his scholarship, but Travis, I'm working on it. 34 yard try. <laughs> it's blocked. And it is on the move in the arms of Tommy Hendricks trying to get that two points, and he can't do it. James Hall, who's had a marvelous first quarter, blocked the field goal try. Remember now, the defense, Hendricks was running. If he could have run it back the other way, he got a touchdown out of it. Yeah, you got a touchdown out of it. So it'll be at the 10 yard line for Michigan. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Better ideas driven by you. BF Goodrich Tires take control. Met Life, get met, it pays. And Napa Auto Parts Stores, we keep America running. The aerial coverage for today's game brought to you by Tostitos, proud sponsor of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, this year's college football national championship. Michigan's ball first down at their own 10 yard line. Clarence Williams to the 14. Brought down by Brad Schioli. James Hall is having a heck of a first quarter. Here he is right in the center of that uh, field goal attempt that was uh, by Penn State. Look at him get over the top and just hang there. He's probably standing on a couple of the uh, Penn State offensive linemen, but. James Hall with a blocked field goal, a sack, and a forced fumble. And we're not even through the first quarter yet. Second down and six from the 14. Ten to nothing. And somebody was bobbing up and down on the offensive front. Looked like Jeff, might have been Jeff Backus. Lack of concentration again bites him. You know, that rule about not being able to run up the back of a lineman was born out of a play that Bob Crable of Notre Dame made against Michigan down here in the right end zone yeah. several years ago. Yeah. There was <laughs> a story from another division that the center had a board in his back under his jersey. <laughs> That's where we're running up his back. <laughs> uh-huh. Penalty backs him up, make it second down 11. This is Williams, fumble the ball. And Penn State's got it. Brad Schioli caught it on the fly. And so the Nittany Lions come up with a big break they made for themselves. Born out of a hard hit. Well, this is good and bad for Michigan. Lloyd Carr has been looking for a runner to hit the holes and run with abandon like Clarence Williams is right there. The bad part of it is they've let 
and Schioli gets the fumble. They've led the Big Ten in fumble recoveries given away and takeaways with 13. Yeah, but you know what, Grace? I think Fox just came in and put oh, a hat right oh, he on did. it. He did. He had a great hit by yep. Fox. So it's on the 20-yard line. First down for Penn State. And go to McCoo to the left side and down to the 20 to the 15 yard line. Eric McCoo is a true freshman, as you mentioned, uh, Keith, and he's playing because of the, the injury to Cordell Mitchell. He seems to have a knack for running left, even though he's he's a right hander. He seems to want to run that ball and does well with it running left. Left-handed runners are not always that easy to find. Guys who can do it with power. I don't know why, but it's so. Maku again. He's nifty. He's inside. No, he's not either. He's at the 10-yard line. Close to a first down. Next on ABC Sports, stay tuned for regional action as college football doubleheader continues. Michigan State, Ohio State in the Big Ten, Virginia, Florida State, ACC, Pac-10, it's Washington, Oregon, Big 12, Oklahoma State, Texas. Check your local listing for the game in your area or check with your cable operator for the pay-per-view. Give the ball to Sarah Malley, and what a hit he got from Hendricks. Wow. Tommy <laughs> Hendricks is not a gimme. He's a safety at 6'2", 215, and he dehorned We it. talked about defense starting off this game. They hit the Fox a little earlier, and now Tommy Hendricks, number 41. You talk about igniting a crowd and igniting a defense, and as far as the Foxes hit, igniting a team. Those are some huge hits. Fourth down and very short, about a foot. Aaron Harris has the first down as he goes to the seven. Brought down by Marcus Ray. Primarily Ray and William Peterson helping. That's just some good offensive blocking on the left side of that line. Now. Behind big old Wedderburn. Yeah. Joe loves this kid Wedderburn. Uh, Floyd Wedderburn uh, came to... Uh, Penn State, a highly touted uh, lineman, a defensive lineman, injured his leg, switched to offense, and now is one of the best Joe says he's ever had. So only give him to the eight, but it's first and goal for Penn State as they go back to Aaron Harris, and he's gang tackled down around the five. Chris Everly is in the backfield right now, and he was at the bottom of that pile of humanity, leading the way, trying to get his full back into the end zone. 36 is Sarah Melli leading the way, and as you go, it's uh, it's tough running down there, Keith. Obviously, the closer you get to the end zone, the tougher the running is going to get. Put it on the five and make it second down and go. The wide receivers, Fields and, and Jones are back. Thompson gives to McCoo. No, no, you don't want to do that. You do not want to go airborne trying to jump over somebody. <laughs> That's a good way to lose the football. Eric Wilson, 279 pounds of anger, was waiting for him. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, saying yesterday he's going to use a lot of defensive linemen and a lot of linebackers so they'll be fresh in the fourth quarter. Third and goal from the four. Well, Michigan's either offsides or Penn State had illegal movement. Wilson's the man who made the contact. Dead ball, encroachment uh -oh. on the defense. Half the distance, third down. It was third and four, but because it's half the distance, it will not be a first down. And that's just good work by Kevin Thompson using his cadence and the offensive line to show some discipline. And the guy that you can get more often than not is the guy right over center. You would think that the guy right next to the center could see the ball and he'd move when the ball moved, but 
it's the voice inflection that you you uh, you get the uh, guy closest. Third and goal from the two. McCoo. Nothing doing. Number 91, Josh Williams, was the first man to get a piece of him. And then all of his pals came to help. And Hendricks is right in the middle of him again. We're inside 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is fourth and goal for Penn State. They'll probably just stand there and let the quarter expire so they'll have some time to talk about it. The kicking team is on the field and the quarter is over and that's it. So it's 10 to nothing Michigan and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Next Oprah. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. It is fourth and one for Penn State at the Michigan one. The kicking team was on the field. Quarter expired. They had time to think about things. The kicking team is on the bench. They're going to go for it. You see that happen all the time, Keith. When this happens, coaches get on the sideline. They talk about it a little bit. Well, let's go. We got one good play. Let's run it. Harris and Sarah Melli lined up in the backfield. It's Harris. He didn't make it. And the thinking is, we've got this great play. If it doesn't work, you leave them down there on the two-yard line. But don't tell that to these fans right now. All they know right now is it's a stop. Sam Sword, the blade. Was we, a talked, bludgeon. we talked about it being a defensive game and sword and Hendricks and gold. Take a look from behind the defense. 93 is sword. 41 is Hendricks. 29 is Ray. No doing there. Now it's up to the Penn State defense to assert itself and keep Michigan pinned so they can have field position after this possession. In the end zone, it's Williams at tailback. From the one, first down. Clarence Williams will get to the three. And that drive by Penn State, Keith, is really not over yet. I mean, they failed, but the thinking was, if, if you don't make it, You'll trap them down there on their own two-yard line, and then we'll force them to punt, and then we'll continue. We'll go back and score again. That's the thinking. Pretty good hole, but then suddenly it was closed by Ascari Adams, number 18. And if you're Michigan, what you want to do is make some first downs, get the ball out where you can punt it, and get them back, back down in their own, within their own 30-yard line, Penn State. It is third down and a long four. The ball is resting at the seven yard line. Knight and Streets and Tooman are all wide. They'll throw. Brady's got it away, and it is incomplete and a penalty flag. You may get one here on Macklin. This could go either way, Keith. Good. Now Marcus Knight and David Macklin were having at it. It may be on Knight. The receiver it might be offensive. It's defensive. But it's not. It's defensive. So that's going to give Michigan its first down. Remember pass interference. Yeah, this is going to be. Yeah, this will be a big first down for Michigan because, like I was talking about, it gets them out from the shadow of their own end zone, and it gets them out where they can make some uh, some yardage and, if, if, if at worst, punt the ball away. College football pass interference is 15 yards, not as from the line of scrimmage. The, pass as interference as yeah. on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. That puts it on the 22-yard line. So the Nittany Lions get flagged. And it's a big one. 
10 to nothing. Michigan leads with 13.43 to go in the first half. Michigan lost its first two. They've won six in a row, but they've been ugly wins. Inside, it is Justin Fargus. Is it? Is it Fargus or is it Williams? Williams, 33. Here's a look at some numbers through the first quarter. Penn State actually ran more plays. Michigan had more points. The one, the one turnover for uh, Michigan did not hurt them. And um, Michigan had the two sacks, and time of possession was big in favor of Penn State. Call it second down and eight now for Michigan. Out of the shotgun, Brady back. What a time. Now throws it. And he, he, he threw a muffin, and Clarence Williams couldn't catch it. Oh, it was a Morrison screen. was uh, over there. Yeah. He was trying to set up a screen, and it was just simply not available. It was a screen pass to the second back, and one of the defenders was over there <laughs> standing right next to Clarence Williams. And there was no way that Brady could throw him the ball. He, just, he was throwing it anywhere. He, he was just looking to throw it away. Yeah. Find somebody that's eligible and throw it away. So that, that brings up third down and long for Michigan. Ball on the 24. Third down and eight. So the Penn State defense still trying to pin them. Well, there's a lot of white shirts up on that line of scrimmage. <laughs> eight of them. Now they peel off on the coverage, the pass. It's a catch. Yes. Ty Streets goes high in front of Macklin and makes the catch. Yeah, that's a nice route. Now that's a nice route by Streets. That's Jew, number 10, that's up and bump and run. He's going to run him off and then stop. He ran him deep, made him think he was going deep, and the key to the whole play was Brady had enough time to sit and wait for him to get open and threw the ball right there, first down. And before anybody else had time to get there, because Macklin was on his way, and David has had some big days against these Wolverines. Put it at the 39-yard line now, and first down for Michigan. They'll run it with Williams. Well, LeVar <laughs> Arrington yeah. just you, swallowed him. You're not going to outrun LeVar. <laughs> Number 11, right in the center. I mean, he just, he just, uh, he's faster he was a running back in high school and a defensive back. He's faster than Clarence Williams. Clarence can't go around in when LeVar's there. Loss on the play is two yards. It'll be second down and 12. We're in the second quarter with Michigan leading 10 to nothing. That's Marcus Knight moving. Brady with good protection. Not a very good pass. Wasn't a, wasn't a very good angle for the receiver to, to get him the ball. It was just poor communication between the quarterback and receiver. He threw it inside, and uh, Clarence Williams had turned outside. Now Keith, this defense of Penn State has been phenomenal. There are players who have phenomenal impact. You see their sacks or tackles for a loss, and also those same five guys are the leading tacklers in total for that defense. Not a secondary guy among them, which means those guys in secondaries can really look to play pass coverage more, Keith. Three wide outs out of the shotgun. Brady's pass is thrown quickly to Terrell, David Terrell, who is a freshman and a burner out of Richmond, Virginia, but he ain't burned nothing on that one. Yeah. Well, they doused him at the 40. Penn State forces Michigan to punt, but Michigan offensively did a nice job of turning that, that uh, last possession of Penn State where they stopped him at the two-yard line. They wiped that out now. They're going to punt the ball away, and, and uh, that's wiped out. Pressure, but the kick's out of there by Vinson, and Jason hangs it up. It is taken by Bruce Branch. Hendricks got a piece of him and takes him down. So Tommy Hendricks grabbed him and dragged him down. And uh, let's see whether or not there was a face mask involved here. It's back around the 21 yard line. Personal foul and it's on Michigan. Ooh. So that helps the net line. Good ball. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yards and the end of the run. First down. 
So that moves him out around the 35 36 yard line for this possession. Next Saturday, number four UCLA meets Washington, or Nebraska faces number two Kansas State, plus other regional action. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question this week. Who holds the career interception record at Brown University? We'll be back with the answer in a few minutes, and no, it is not Gordon Gee yet. <laughs> But he, he is here at this game today. <laughs> you mean the man who holds the record? Yes, not yes. Gordon Gee. Gordon, he wouldn't be at a Michigan game. <laughs> From the 36-yard line, Thompson pops and throws and has a man at the sidelines and missed him. Corey Jones was available to him. That pump fake had uh, cleared him from Andre Weathers, but Thompson didn't deliver it. Now Joel told us last night that they were going to felt like they had to throw against Michigan to win, and they've come out throwing. Thompson only two of seven so far for 34 yards. That's a pretty good secondary he's throwing into. And there are no gimmies back there, but the man was available that time. On second and ten. Some pressure dumps it off to Concho Brown and Concho comes up with his second big play that puts the ball over on the Michigan 49 yard line and a first down as Patman and Kratos bring him down. I think I think both quarterbacks in this game and quarterbacks in general Keith should throw to their tight ends more and I know you'll agree with that. Yeah, I like that right to the right of your screen there Concho just goes down turns around. I think if you want to keep possession of the football and move it down the field, your backs and your uh, tight ends uh, should be involved. This is Everly. Everly's got some quick, but not that time. Defensive flow was very good with big old Sam. Sam Sword out of Saginaw making the hit. Well, Jim Herman says we got to get after him. We got to move. We got to blitz. Sword sees the run, runs through, has the speed to run under and get through the line and make the play. Gain two, second down and eight for the Lions. Joe Paterno last night at nine o'clock was as relaxed as I've ever seen him. Before a game. Here comes the pressure. The pass is away and the pressure spoiled it. Because he was hit just as he threw Deontay Jones was the man who did it number 55 and Whitley the cornerback to the wide side was the other guy that did it by having good coverage on the receiver that brings up third down and eight we're at 10 15 to play in the first half. Hendricks prowling around. Now he's going big down the middle for Nastasi. And no chance. Thompson, Running with him, Andre Weather. Now Thompson is throwing the ball where, where they were in practice all week. And they're not exactly where they are. He's got to look downfield because they're a little bit uh, inside or outside. He just turns and throws his football. And it brings in the punting team, Pat Pigeon, second kick of the day. First one was a 47-yarder. He wants to pop this one up and kill it down there. And it is fielded by Marcus Knight. And Marcus gets a couple of lumps and two yards. As he gets back to the 15. And timeout with an even 10 minutes to go in the first half. Michigan leading 10 to nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Silverado, the truck from Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks. Fidelity Investments, where 12 million investors put their trust. Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. And the document company Xerox, keep the conversation going, share the knowledge. We'd like to thank Tostitos, proud sponsor of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, college football's national championship, for providing aerial coverage of today's game. 
Yeah, we'll be out there on what, January the 4th? The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Championship game. You'll be there right after the Rose. Ah, yeah. yes. Justin Fargus, number 34, is in the backfield now. The freshman from Sherman Oaks, California. The pass is thrown and caught by Mark Campbell, and he falls down. Yeah, well, that's that's a play that they ran a lot last year. And Mike DeBoard was telling me that, you know, Brian Greasy ran that play a lot last year, and he ran it well. And Tom Brady is a different style of quarterback. Brady likes different plays than Brian liked. And uh, Brian, Brady throws the ball well downfield. Brian had a little bit better touch going to the tight ends and backs. Who was that you were talking about? Who, who? Oh, some kid. <laughs> I don't hear from him much anymore because he's got his own <laughs> payroll coming in. <laughs> Park is on the carry. Here's Swanee. Well, Keith, we've seen it happen a couple of times in this ball game already. A lot of ball players are slipping and losing their footing on this football field. It hasn't rained necessarily here during this week, but the root system on this grass is very shallow. So the big boys in the trenches will definitely dig it up, but the wide receivers and tight ends running down the field, planning and making cuts, are just tearing this field up. So they're going to have some problems coming out of all of their breaks, Keith. Third down and six now for Michigan. Penn State showing it. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming. The pass is away. The pass is completed, and it's stopped short by a yard of a first down. Clarence Williams out of the backfield, brought down by David Fleischauer. Fleischauer is a defensive tackle, making uh, the tackle way over on the sideline. That's what they call a zone blitz. The linebackers blitz, and the defensive tackles drop back off in coverage. Watch, you'll see the linebackers coming. And Fleischauer, 95, right there, will come out and make the tackle. He was back in coverage. 274-pound guy covering a small back. Guy running the chain gang over there has got first down up. That's too optimistic. It's fourth down. The kick is away by uh, Vincent off to Branch. Branch at the 41-yard line gets away from one, and uh, that one comes back and gets him, Aaron Shea. So he missed him the first time, but got him the second time around, and the ball will be just outside the 40-yard line. Sunday Night Live at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Sunday Night Football, the Tennessee Oilers against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who had a huge win last time we saw them against Minnesota. And then Monday night on ABC Sports at 8 Eastern time, the first time that Green Bay and Pittsburgh have ever played each other on Monday Night Football. And the fun. That should be a good Sunday one. Sunday and Monday. Yep. Yeah, Packers looked uh, downright nasty. Didn't they? <laughs> the other day. Shades of old. Yep. First down from the 41 now for Penn State. 10 to nothing. Michigan is still leading. And this is Everly. And Everly keeps on uh, trucking. Picks up about eight yards before Whitley finally takes his wheels away. The offensive line, uh, there's a couple pretty good uh, offensive players in that offensive line for Penn State. Wedderburn and McKenzie, Cole. Fagan is number 60, 55 is Ransom. Gold runs around the block, and Everly does a nice job. There's enough of a hole there for the back to get through and make some yardage. Nice play. Second down and three, not four, it's three. Everly again, and he got away from the first tackler. And makes it first down, Penn State at the Michigan 35-yard line. So Everly showing some pop out of that tailback position. Again, the tackle by Whitley. Fran Ganner is uh, the offensive coordinator, adjusting a little bit to what Michigan has done in the first uh, quarter. Calling a nice game, running plays, uh, working both of those last two plays to the left side of the line. That was an 18-yard run, and that's the longest play of the day. There's Franny talking to Sarah Melli. Sharpie Fields hasn't seen it yet. Everly again. And the tackle by Rob Renus, number 58. The big guy in the middle from Holland, Michigan. And coming off the field is Joaquin Fazell with a bit of a gimpy leg. So Joaquin is out of there, and Jake Freisinger goes back in. Jake is from Gross Isle. Or if you're in France, uh, Gross Isle. 35-yard <laughs> line, second down and 10. Right, you're coming. 
Sets up his screen, has the ball in the hands of Eberle, and Eberle will get it back to just about the 31. Tommy Hendricks reacting well to cover on the play. Sam Sword leads this Michigan team in tackles as he has the last two years, number 93, unblocked. And Thompson does a nice job of buying time. And Sam says, I didn't hit him too hard. I just, I didn't hit him. Renus and Hendricks are both shaken up. Uh, Renus is walking off the field now. Hendricks is still down. So in that last play, there was some collisions that damaged folks. Football is not a contact sport, it was once said. It is a collision sport. Mm -hmm. Dancing is a contact sport. Time out. Back to the big house in Ann Arbor. We come 10 to nothing. Michigan leading with 5.59 to play in the first half. Tommy Hendricks is off the field. Marcus Ray replaces him at the safety spot for Penn State. It is third down and five. Everly is the deep man. Kevin Thompson back to throw it has time and gets it away and you've got a penalty flag thrown by the back judge in the end zone. He's standing right back on the goal line watching the play across the field and threw the flag. It's probably going to be a, a penalty against Michigan and will give uh, Penn State a first down. They needed five yards. Whenever the back judge in the center of the field throws it, it's normally a foul against the tight end or the slot receiver. Jim Kimberling. There are multiple fouls on the play, both against the defense. Oops. Holding on the defense, pass interference on the defense. The holding call will be enforced, 10 yards, first down. So One of the things that uh, Carr has complained about this year is the turnovers and the penalties. And this is a big one because that ball was incomplete. On the defense is declined, holding on and the that, defense. And that, that is big because that's a turnover. I mean, they, they, they keep the they first down, keep the ball. It would have been fourth down and five, but it instead, after the penalty, it is first down and 10, just short of the Michigan 20-yard line. So Penn State's down here knocking on the door again. They pretty well handled things here in the second quarter, but they haven't been able to get the points on the board yet. This is Everly, and Michigan's defense is a little tougher on this play. They stopped after a yard pickup, and it's Jake Freisinger who replaced Fizel in on the tackle. Second down and nine. Three receivers to this side, Keith. Jones and Field. Branch goes to the other side now, and they give it away to Everly going for the outside. Broke one tackle. But he could not get loose. He got away from Freisinger, but Deonta Jones finally tracked him down, and he puts it down to about the 15-yard line. The Aflac trivia question we had asked you earlier about who holds the career interception record at Brown University. He played from 1947 to 1950, and if you don't believe that he holds the record, well, then I'll tell you. It is Joe Paterno, and he'll tell you anytime you want to talk about it. Now, that picture was of, of him being a quarterback, but he also played defensive back. And he had 14, 14 interceptions. Thompson's pass to the end zone. Bad throw. Lucky to get it back. Lucky is right. Threw right into double coverage. Choppy Fields was covered by Patman yeah. and Whitley. He was fortunate to have the time. Thompson has all kinds of time, but the fact remains, even though you have all that time, the man is still covered. So you and either have to take off and run and create something or just throw it away. And it is fourth down. And maybe he did. I mean, he threw it far enough that nobody caught it. 32 yard field goal try for Travis Forney. 
Trying to get the Lions on the scoreboard. And he missed it. Three times now, Penn State has been inside the so-called red zone, once on the one-yard line, and have failed to score. You know, Lloyd Carr talked about the lack of intensity, Keith, in this Michigan uh, team, and he said, we've got to turn it on, and I don't know if we can just turn it off and on the way we want it, but they came out ready to play this ball game, and the offense took it down and scored, and Penn State has done a couple of things to help the Michigan players in their emotional level. Once, when they failed to make uh, the uh, fourth down on the two-yard line, and then that missed field goal right there. Wolverines from the 20. It's Clarence Williams to the 25. You know what else I see? I see the presence of Clarence Williams adding something here, Bob. Yeah, I do too. And that's, uh, you know, we don't, uh, we don't know why he makes a change. I mean, Clarence hasn't started a game uh, in four or five games. But maybe in practice, uh, maybe in the meetings, in talking to him, maybe uh, Clarence Williams reacted to that uh, inspiration uh, on the field. And... Uh, Carr really knew it because he's getting some production out of him here today. Jerry Tooman has just limped off the field for Michigan. Big tight end. Their leading receiver among the tight ends. A big year last year. That's back to the line of scrimmage. And that's all for Clarence Williams as Courtney Brown gets the first call of the day. Courtney a defensive end and a very good one. Having a great year. Courtney Brown uh, had a cast on his hand most of last year with a broken hand. Leads this team. Number 86 leads the team in sacks with eight and just runs over uh, Campbell, number 88, and makes the play in the backfield. On third down and five now, Anthony Thomas has come in at tailback. And they'll work out of the shotgun. Thomas is a pretty good receiver, evolving, and he's also becoming a pretty good blocker. And that's why he's in there against Arrington. The pass is completed upfield to Diallo Johnson for a first down. So Thomas is in there, and when Arrington came, Thomas picked him up, and Brady completes the pass. Take a look from behind. Number 32 is Anthony Thomas. He's going to block on the linebacker, Arrington. And that's a first down. One of the things that Jerry Sandusky was uh, telling me that he was concerned about Arrington, how he would react to this type of game. He's done well when he's rushing the passer, but this is a physical team and the pounding of the running game. Sliding to the outside, Williams down. That ball rolls loose, but he is down. And now we go to John Saunders in New York. State, Minnesota against Wisconsin. Ron Dane with a touchdown from two yards up, made it 10-0. Then Billy Cockram tosses this one 53 yards to Luke Leverson. He gets to the end zone for the touchdown. 10-7 where it stands now. Keith. I think old Glenn Mason's got those gophers. Uh, they're troublesome. They're, sh they're showing some life, yeah. aren't they? Yes, they are. This is Justin Fargus, number 34 carrying. He's the freshman. He's listed from Encino, California, where he lives. He played football at Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks, and I know that's true. Because the lights are too bright some nights when I'm sitting on the porch. Oh, now quit complaining now. Here you go. <laughs> well, you're getting spoiled, you know? This victory tour you're going around here. You and Jim Kimmerling are retiring in the same year. And Kimmerling made you an offer, though. I think it was kind of interesting. No. You come back, he will. I ain't listening. <laughs> Third down and four. <laughs> Brady out of it has some time. Looking and looking, and now he spots Johnson again. And hits him again on the same play, and it's uh, just short of midfield and another first down. So just when it felt like Penn State might be getting a hold of old Mo, now it's beginning to swing back the other way. Diallo Johnson is kind of the outlet on those last two first down plays. Brady looked down the field, and everything was covered, and he came back, and Johnson picks up the first downs. One fifteen to play in the first half. They run it inside with Clarence will uh, Anthony Thomas and Thomas will wiggle in there for a couple of yards tomorrow at four Eastern three Pacific on ABC Sports thrifty car rental skate America International from Detroit down the road Nicole Bobek on the ice in her first major international competition of the season and the first time the skaters have been eyeballed by the international panel of judges. Now 
now let's take a look at this week's Marriott moment. Let's go back to 1996 at the big house in Ann Arbor. Penn State visiting Michigan. Kim Harry will have two interceptions, and a young freshman named David Macklin will block two punts as Penn State beats Michigan 29-17. Thus, Penn State is the last Big Ten team to beat the Wolverines. Yep, they went undefeated last year, and this year they've won six in a row coming into this game, and they lead as we approach halftime, 10 to nothing, over a Penn State team that was favored by most people. David Macklin has turned in to be a very good defensive back. Oh, he sure has. That big fellow right there is becoming something of a sensation himself. It is second down and call it nine now, just over the midfield stripe. They're coming. Passes away. It is completed to Anthony Thomas down the sidelines. One man. And it is Mao Jew that saves the touchdown. So Anthony Thomas turned on the Jets once he got free and almost made it. You talk about hitting him at the right time. Here's a blitz. Arrington's going to be blocked by Backus right there. And you have a quick pass off to the man in the flat. Number 32, Thomas. Brady does a nice job of uh, baiting the rush, getting the ball out. You couldn't call it a better play right then than that against that blitz. And it's first and goal. Thomas stays in, gets it again, and gets a lick. Uh, it's Williams, I'm sorry, uh, from number 31 uh, for Penn State. Mac Morrison out of Fort Orchard, Washington. And he just ripped him one. Tom Brady is having a... Uh, very good first half, 10 of 15, and uh, he's completed his last six throws. Thomas is still out there, and he really took a whack from Morrison. Now Anthony's going to come out. Jerry, uh, Jeremy Tooman is back out on the field as well, having shaken off that apparent ankle sprain. We did this game last year, Keith, remember, over at uh, Happy Valley. And uh, one of the things I remember about it is it was a very physical, hard-hitting game. All you got to do is look at the helmets. You want to know what kind of game it is? Look at the helmets. Is that, is that some paint swap in there, Hoss? Paint swap. <laughs> uh -huh. If you go out there and hunker down in the trenches and go home with a shiny new helmet, I'd run you off. Now, now, we're in middle America now. You got to talk so they can understand you here now. Come on. Well, Joe knows what I'm saying. Well, I know. So does Lloyd. And so does Sandusky. And so does anybody else who's yeah. stuck their head in there. Brady has uh, completed eight passes to different receivers. Ball is on the seven yard line. It is second down and goal to go with Thomas and Shea lined up in the backfield. Brady throws it. Ty Streets catches it. Touchdown. There's a penalty flag. It's going to be on Macklin. The mismatch in size. Streets is eight inches taller than Macklin who never saw the football. On the defense, the time, touchdown. Take a look. Macklin will never see the ball coming. He's starting to push him a little bit. That's the 16th career touchdown for Ty Streets. Having a spectacular season. Six straight games now with a touchdown reception for Ty. Feely for the point. It's good. With 50 seconds, just 50 seconds remaining in the first half, Michigan 17 to nothing. Ty Streets pulls it in using his height and his leaping ability. And last year, remember Ty dropping some balls? Well, he had a broken finger on one hand and a broken thumb on the other hand. That's a little hard. Yeah, had a had a big Rose Bowl game too. 
that I think really propelled him into this year, gave him a great deal of confidence. Knuckleball bouncing down the middle. It's picked up in the middle of the field and brought back by R.J. Loop. And here's one. There you see the uh, replay, the, the taller 6-4 tie streets over the 5-8 Macklin. Pitch and catch. Ball is caught by Corey Jones. And Jones will move the ball up to about the 37. 30 seconds remaining in the first half of the second largest crowd ever at Michigan Stadium. 111,019. The ball thrown to the sideline, intercepted. Thrown right to William Peterson. He was all over the receiver. Thompson let it go, and about halfway there, but old Kevin wished he was on the string. 21 seconds remaining in the half. Michigan's got the ball, and they're on the 43-yard line. Well, when he throws this ball, Peterson's got his back to the ball, but when he sees the receiver look back, then William Peterson looks back to the ball. It's right there, underthrown, his fourth interception on the year. You want to put a little salt on it? He's from Uniontown, PA. Uh. Thompson only 5 of 14, uh, 59 yards. Lions come up, got... Nine in the box. Now they'll peel off when the wideouts take off out of the shotgun. They want to get to Brady in a hurry. He throws the ball in a hurry and he misses David Terrell from Richmond, Virginia. He threw that quicker than he had to. I'm sure that Joe Paul is going to say, hey, this is not the Michigan team we've been looking at on film the last four weeks. This offense has come out and fired up. And uh, evidently, whatever Lloyd Carr said to him, it worked. Uh, he did say that on Tuesday, they had their best practice of the year. 18 seconds remaining. Players know, Keith. They know how you're going to have to play. Brady with a long throw to the sidelines that is incomplete. Oh, my goodness. He had Ty Streets who was beginning to clear on yep. a post. Uh, Keith and Bob, that, you know, Ty Streets is having the kind of the year. I'm surprised they're, they're trying to throw a couple of short passes here with the exception of having enough time. He's having the kind of year where you just need to send him deep. He's got the confidence. He's got the attitude. He's got the athletic ability where he can just go up in the air and make a play. And you're moving the ball way down the field. It also serves a second pur purpose. That is driving a stake in the heart of the Nittany Lions if they complete a big one and get into the end zone before the half is over. They got 12 seconds to do it. It's third down. Well, they won't do it this time because the ball is snapped over his head and penalty flags are flying, and that's probably a dead ball foul. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Yep. Five yards. That'll back them up five and uh, remain third down and 15 now. So they lose their composure a little bit here. Get get anxious. I don't believe I can coach. You know that, Bob? I just don't think that I... <laughs> I'd need a new stomach at, at about age 35. Well, I mean, you, you know, you have to have patience and, you know, you have to have a high threshold of, of, of tolerance, frustrations, all that stuff. But when you're a young man, you can deal with that. I don't know if you can coach now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. <laughs> 17 to nothing. The Wolverines are leading, and they'll run off the clock now as Clarence Williams takes off down the sidelines and goes out of bounds. And uh, my goodness, he got out of bounds with about seven seconds, at least according to that particular scoreboard. Uh, seven seconds to play in the first half. It's mind-boggling, isn't it, Grace, to come here and see a hundred, more than 111,000 yeah. people? Yeah, you know, and, and oh, it, as an opponent, though, it's not really an intimidating place to no. come play. No, it isn't. Because they're not right on top of you. They kind of, it kind of sways back, and they're laying away from you. And this crowd is really not a hostile crowd. Nope. 
they're more of a and they're polite for well, lack of a better term players every once in a while get a little aggravated they have to walk around and yell at them because they just sit and yeah. enjoy things yeah. you know they're having so much fun they don't make all that much noise fourth down and uh, here you ought to try and block it you know why not well, Jim Kimmeling just threw a flag, so look at the 25 second clock. Did they burn it? I guess. I don't know. Dead ball, delay of game, honey yep. offense, five so yards, they, fourth down. They burn up the 25 second clock, which adds five more yards. And it really doesn't matter because yeah, they're not a punt anyway. Yeah, that's not a critical uh, penalty there. Penn State has nobody deep, and now they're going to peel out Bruce Branch and send him back there. But their other 10 are up on the line of scrimmage. And they're going after it. And they almost got there. There's some contact, but not enough to get a flag. And the ball goes out of bounds. We can't kill that clock. There you go. You got it. Well, finally. Finally, it's over. <laughs> it took forever to shoot that last seven seconds. 17 0 Michigan leading. Here's John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Welcome back to the uh, Big House in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where a few moments ago, a couple of old friends got together at halftime. The country. I don't think you realize what an impact you've had on college football. You've been our greatest ambassador, and I just want to say for all of these people out here, and all the people on ABC, we really appreciate all the things that you've done for college football and wish you the very best in your retirement. Well, nobody's had more fun than I have. Well, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of this. Forever, every place we go. <laughs> They take you down on the field and they're giving you rocking chairs from Penn State and honorary membership to the press box at Iowa. You got the best food in college football over there. Everywhere we go, they just high fiving you and making the rest of us well, just fun. feel like we're carrying your bags, which we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could learn how to stay composed and but I can't because I love these people and uh, I've got to fun. You've probably been here more than any other place in college football, haven't you? Yep. Over I the years? So. Yep. It's been great. Five yard line. Here's the return by Justin Fargus. He's a burner and he's out across the 30 and near the 34. Well, if you missed the first half, uh, hang on because we're going to show you the highlights. Aaron Shea out of the backfield catches this Brady pass for the first touchdown. And then James Hall knocks Thompson loose from the ball and a field goal makes it 10 to nothing. Michigan blocks a field goal. James Hall does it again. And then the touchdown pass in the corner to Ty Streets makes it 17 to nothing at half. And Clarence Williams on a carry will pick up a, almost four yards as he slid over the right side. So the tempo starting the second half of play is much like uh, the tempo of the first half. It's quick, quick, a little quicker than we've seen. Well, I, I can imagine the conversation at halftime. Lloyd Carr says, we're playing great. Don't change anything. Just keep it going. Keep the emotion. And, of course, Joe Paterno says, hey, we can, we can win this game. Let's just go out and play better. Inside they go with Clarence Williams, and he's close to his first down. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, numbers at halftime. 210 yards of offense for Michigan. Penn State had the two turnovers. They also had a field goal blocked. In the third down efficiency for Penn State, only one of seven. That's pretty good for Michigan, 50%. Ball rests at the 42. It'll be third down and one. Williams gets it. This time he slid to the left side and made it to the 45. And here's Lynn Swan. 
Well, Keith, Joe Paterno was fairly calm coming down the tunnel. He said he felt his defense was playing well enough to keep him in the ball game, but offensively, they just weren't making things happen, not taking advantage of the opportunities. And he said, we just have to execute a little bit better in the second half, but no major changes for the second half. Now, Lloyd Carr was very pleased, but the one thing Lloyd Carr has in his mind is the first game of the year, Notre Dame. He said, Lynn, keep in mind, when we played Notre Dame, we are beating them up the first half, and we lost that game. Second half is very important to us. Keith? Coaches always remember those types of things. Radius passes away and on target to Aaron Shea out of the backfield. So the former tight end, actually the former fullback, uh, converted to tight end and moved back to fullback. Makes the catch. He scored uh, with the first touchdown of the ball game on a reception. And part of your commentary there, Keith, was key. On target. He's thrown that pass about four or five times, and it was not on target. The, the, the receiver couldn't catch it and run with it. That was on target. It's important, too, you don't throw it too hard. Exactly. That time, the ball was very soft yeah. and catchable. Make it a catchable pass. They're coming. And Williams runs right under. One of the blitzing backers, Brandon Short, and got about three yards. Short came flying over the pile, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. A, this well, it's catching, you know, Eric, who did it last <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah. Watch uh, 43 and the linebacker right over the top. LeVar Arrington made that move last week, and, uh, and you know, all the defensive guys sit in the meetings and they see that. I think it's spreading. Well, they see old LeVar got all that publicity you know I oh sure some of that. oh sure that's right <laughs> the spectacular play gets on the highlights second down and seven Brady throws it right into the face of Arrington there's that move where uh, short learned it Arrington last week number 11 right side of your screen except he made <laughs> he finished the play there it is again He probably uh, get on Brandon and say, Brandon, you ain't got no wings. <laughs> Third down now and seven after that last pass was batted down for Penn State by Arrington. And Anthony Thomas is in the backfield. He's there for blocking. The pass is thrown again on target to Jeremy Tuman, But a fine defensive play by Derek Fox stops him short of the first down. So it'll bring up fourth and short for Michigan. Tuman from the left side of your screen, number 80. Tight end's going to cross. And Fox, number four, finds his way through the traffic, gets across there, and saves the first down uh, from Michigan from making the first down. Jason Vinson comes in to punt now. Looking for a fake here or anything, yeah. There you go. Vargas steps in as Vincent runs out. Two, one second on the clock. They burned it. Yeah. Well, they're trying to get Penn State to jump. That's what they were trying to do, all that running around. And all, now they're going to take the five-yard penalty. That's Scott Dreisbach. And uh, Vincent will go ahead and punt it. Dreisbach uh, was in on the punting. In fact, Scott Dreisbach, who was a starter here for a lot of games, is in on a lot of the special teams and is in on the punt team. He moved the quarterback, tried to pull him off sides, and it didn't work. And might have been the tip off right there that kept the Lions at home too. Seeing a new quarterback in there saying wait a minute. But they showed their discipline and held their positions and uh, Michigan now will punt. Branch is the deep man for the Nittany Lions. Third quarter of play Michigan leading 17 to nothing. Now they're going to let it run down again. This, this is not a problem. I mean, if, if, if no, you didn't burn a timeout. They did. Burned. No, <laughs> somebody did because he called it. You don't want to use you your time out there. They're counting people. They had 10 men on the field. Well, they could have taken the delay of game and got the next guy in the 11th guy in the field. That's just uh, that's a poor timeout. Yeah, that's a that's a loss because you're going to kick it in the end zone anyway from there. <laughs> Now I think we're going to kick the ball on fourth down and 
Seven. Jason Benson is kicking and Bruce Branch is waiting. Ten lines up on the line. They got some pressure. No contact, not enough to call for a flag. And he kicks it into the end zone. David Macklin, the corner was coming. They were close. You know, Macklin blocked two punts here a couple years ago. Here's 20. Well, Keith, the Michigan defense has been playing great, and the key to playing great on defense is winning on first down. Take a look at how they did in the first half. Four yards or less, eight times, five plus yards, five. They're definitely winning on the first down, which is creating some very difficult third and long situations for Penn State. But as we said, it all begins on how you play it on the first down, Keith. All righty. You are right on. No question. Michigan showing blitz here themselves. They'd like to pin him up down here somewhere. They hand the ball to Everly, and Everly runs into Marcus Ray. And they scuffle a bit and stop at about the 24-yard line. Well, let's take a look at this Michigan defense. In the last five games, the Big Ten, they've played five games in the Big Ten. They've only allowed three points in the second half. Only three safety. Very good defense. No fourth quarter points. Second down, call it a long five. And they stay with Everly. He's having a pretty good outing today. He's a good back. He just didn't meet the re physical requirements and, and go through the yeah. procedures as uh, prescribed, and then they wouldn't let him play until he did it. He's a he's more of a slasher. Uh, he can he gets through the holes. He's a tough competitor. And Fran Ganner said, uh, you know, he can play. He's a he's a legitimate back. He just didn't come back in shape, and and they know the rules. Tommy Hendricks has not returned, incidentally, to the ball game, so that bruised hip apparently is going to keep Tommy on the bench for the rest of the day. It is a first down for the Nittany Lions now. Let's see if they go long ball here pretty soon. Well, they were looking for Shoppy Fields, and you know what? Shoppy Fields uh, was just buried. He never had any chance against James Whitley. And Patman comes in and decks the quarterback. And Kevin got up uh, very tenderly. Well, Patman knows how much time he has. And he knows what, how long the route's going to take. And he says, I don't have time for this. And he does a nice job of not taking the sack and just throwing it away. Patman, one of the fastest defensive backs in that secondary. Second down and 10. Well, that didn't work very well. Somebody was in the wrong place. Everly and Thompson ran together back there. And by the time they tried to sort it out, they were buried in maize and blue. Well, you're not going to have a lot of time with that defensive line. They're twisting. Sword, Sam Sword, 93. I couldn't tell. I, I, it may have been Everly being on the wrong side yeah, I think that's what it was. to get the football. So it is third down and at least 13. Oh, he almost fumbled that thing, but he got a hold of it and throws it down the sidelines and is intercepted. It's picked off by Dwayne Patnam. So Thompson tried to force one to Shoppy Fields. He threw it into double coverage, never saw the safety, and it's intercepted. It was an awful series for Kevin Thompson. He had to throw one away. Then he mis mishandled the exchange with uh, Everly. And then the last time, he, he almost doesn't get the center quarterback exchange. He had problems with this a couple of games ago where he didn't get three of them. And then he doesn't even see Patman, number 15, and tries to fit it in. That's his fourth interception. Okay, babe, here we go. Um, now, move over to the right. Um, no, the other way, my right. A little more. Mm, a little more. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Tostitos, proud sponsor of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, college football's national championship. 
Super 8 motels, over 1,700 throughout North America. And Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up but never let you down, make it up, Bud Light. Michigan's ball first down at just outside their own 46 yard line now with Clarence Williams at the backfield Brady back on first down gets it away and it is caught by Eric Shea. Oh what a catch by Shea. Went right through a defender's hands. James Boyd looked like he was a cinch to pick it off. He's going to make a pump fake right here. That's poor throw there. Boyd should have had the ball, and Shea just takes it away from him. Boyd's problem was he waited for the ball to come to him instead of reaching out with his hands and taking it away from Shea. And it puts it down near the 32 of Penn State, first down Michigan. That's Anthony Thomas with that carry. And he's just about the line of scrimmage before Arrington got him. Tom Brady made a poor throw on that last pass, but he's having a very good game. 14 of 22, 178 yards and two touchdowns. Second down and nine. Mike doesn't have a catch today yet. Ball is thrown low and it's incomplete. Hit the ground. He tried to throw it low and away to Mark Campbell, but it didn't work. Make a play you can make. Penn State needs a, a turn down here. They, you know, a sudden change is a, a turnover, an interception or a fumble. They need to come out after that sudden change and shut them down. On third and nine, out of the shotgun, blitz coming. Pick it up pretty well. Pass is deflected out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. The offensive line and the backs are picking up those blitzes and the defensive ends uh, very well, Keith. I mean, they've not had a sack uh, against Michigan today, and they're not getting in his face or anything. I'm frankly surprised. I am too. I, I Penn State came in second in the nation yep. in oh, sacks. Look at this. This is man sized. It's 49 yards for Jay Feely. 49 yard field goal try. On its way. Got it! That just got in the corner. Everybody on the maize and blue side was a huffing and puffing, but it crept over and it's 20 to nothing, Michigan. What was that close? <laughs> Feely now with 54 points. Another 51. His long was 51 yards. He's the leading scorer on the team as well. And he now has uh, 51 points. Sunday night live at 8.15 Eastern. Tennessee against Tampa Bay. Trent Dilfer and company coming back against the Oilers after their big win over the Vikings. And then Monday night on ABC Sports, the Green Bay Packers and the Pittsburgh Steelers, Brett Favre and that bunch from up north, cranking things up now a little bit. And it'll be played in Pittsburgh. Ellie Hayes on his way. So is Mark Amedo and Craig Rothberg and the other folks who do, do double duty. You're beginning to look like an airplane seat. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Hayden Epstein will kick now for Michigan. Epstein, 16 of 30 have gone touchback. So the youngster from the West Coast who wound up at Michigan has a big leg. Eric McCoo is among uh, those waiting. Eddie Drummond is the other one.
That one hangs up. Kind of ballooned on him a little bit. Taken by McCoo at the 10 yard line. Look out. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 33. And Epstein gets his second tackle of his career. He had uh -huh. one last week. Uh huh. Here's a look at the offensive numbers for Penn State, and they're not going to be very appetizing. Thompson not having a very good day, two interceptions. Everly has looked uh, pretty good, and Brown, the tight end, leads in the receiving end of it. Lions come up with pretty good field position now. They send Fields and Jones to the same side. The first down at the 34, send Chopper the other way now. Thompson hands it off to Everly. And Everly runs well. He picks up about nine yards or so. Dwayne Patton finally brought him down. Ball is on the 44, so it's close enough to bring the chains onto the field. At the conclusion of today's game, we will choose the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game with each of the universities receiving contribution from Chevrolet for their general scholarship funds. It's been going on now for more than a quarter century by Chevrolet. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, but way back early in the ball game when Penn State and Joe Paterno went for that fourth and one remember they changed their mind I think uh, he's uh, after he looks back at it, it's going to say I should have should have gotten some points on the board when you're on the road in a hostile environment you need to get on the board and just start accumulating some points as you saw it was just short here you could afford to go for the big one there and he's go. going to down the middle he's got it Caught by Corey Jones, and uh, he had another one uh, breaking all the way. Concho Brown, the tight end, was going on a post and was out there, but covered, and so he took the fellow underneath, and it works for the first down. And it's a nice call. Franny Gantner on second and one, thinking if you don't complete this, you can come back and pick it up on third and one, but the inside receiver just clearing it out, and then Jones coming back underneath. Penn State needs to do something on this drive here, Keith. First down just inside the Michigan 33. Everly, penalty flag. Everly's down. Yeah, Everly's taken down by Sam Sword. But that flag is thrown in the area where the quarterback threw the ball. It might be a holding call against the Lions. That's what it is. When you're back there battling for your life and you're trying to protect your quarterback, it's easy to hold. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat, first down. That's a big penalty because it comes from the point of the foul. It'll be first and 25. Yeah, good point. You lose 15 yards, not just 10. Everly and Harris now in the backfield. They'll be throwing, and here pressure comes, and the pass is out of bounds. The man who created the problem was Ian Gold, who came flying through, and he took Thompson down. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, as you take a look at that's Fagan that's still down. Brian Herman, Fagan. Uh, Herman told us yesterday that uh, when, when Thompson gets an opportunity to set in the pocket and set his feet, he is very dangerous. But what they wanted to do was force him to move outside the pocket and then also get physical with him, knock him down. Because I don't know any uh, defensive coordinator that doesn't want to get after a quarterback and knock him down. They all say that. So time is out for Ryan Fagan right now, and they're looking at the right ankle area. And he's obviously hurt, so we'll take some time here. 7-13 to go in the third quarter, 20 to nothing, Michigan. Sun pops out, vividly bright on the green grass of Michigan Stadium. And the Wolverines and the home crowd, the home crowd pacified now. They're relatively quiet. Their team leads 20 to nothing. And it's second down and 25, and the pass is away to the sidelines and dropped. Did not have possession when he went out of bounds. 
Ori Jones. Defending on the play was number five, James Whitley. Well, what Michigan is doing is forcing, forcing Penn State to go to the pass, and this offensive system is not, not that well polished yet. They've got some good receivers, but Kevin Thompson is just a little bit off. It's tough to go on the road against a tough defense. And looky here. Last year, they didn't have much success either. 0 of 12 on third down conversions, and only today, only one of eight. So it's third and 25. Balls run off the play. Now Thompson takes off. And he is tackled by Ian Gold. Second tackle in a row that Gold has made on Thompson. And he stops him well short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. That Gold can run. Well, that's why he's in there. He's, <laughs> he's, right. he's, a, he's probably one of your smaller linebackers in all of college football. But he can run. 6 1 2 13. He missed four games this year with an injury. And they're happy to have him back in there. Pat Pigeon comes on to punt. Third of the day. Whoa, this is pretty good. High hanger. Gonna let it go and see what happens. And it takes a. Bounce back up the field and the Lions down it at about the 12 yard line. And we spend a moment with John Saunders. Ethan, time for the Burger King update. Purdue has a quarterback who is pretty good. Drew Brees here, seven yards to Tim Stratton. Second time they hooked up on the day. The fourth touchdown for Brees on the day, touchdown pass. One away from Bobby Hoying's 29. That's a record for a season. Hey, Purdue's had some pretty good quarterbacks, haven't they? Now let's see what Michigan can do with it from their 13 yard line. They send it into the stack with Clarence Williams. I wouldn't be surprised to see Williams start again next week, would you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. <laughs> I think what you're going to see is Michigan kind of uh, sitting on the ball, sitting on the ball a little bit. They've won the last five Big Ten games, as we've mentioned, but they've won ugly, Keith. They've not looked good in doing it. Today they've looked very aggressive and very impressive. Williams is out now and Thomas is in for Michigan as they go to the shotgun. Anthony in there to block pressures coming. He gets it away and dumps it off to Thomas and Thomas then is tracked down by number 95 big old David Fleischauer. Yeah that's a wonderful play by Fleischauer. At that time it wasn't a, uh, a zone blitz. He wasn't dropping off. He just he gets out there and makes this play. He's rushing the passer, then he sees where the ball goes. Arrington turns it back to the inside. And if uh, Fleischauer doesn't get there, he's going to make a ten, at least 10 more yards. Yeah, he had a lot of open space in front of him. It is third down and four now. The Wolverines trying to wiggle it out and get some air behind them. Penn State's fighting for field position. It's up in the air. It is caught by Ty Streets. Wow. He went up over David Macklin and just simply made a great play. Again, it's the mismatch in size and height. And Macklin never sees the ball. That's that's one of the problems with playing bump and run. If you don't see the ball coming, you can't play the ball. And Streets, who is 6'4", sees it all the way and just jumps over the defensive back and makes the play. And it's first down Michigan near the 35. Run it with Justin Fargus. Almost lost it. And there's a penalty flag down as Fargus got to midfield. That may come back. You don't want this guy to get loose and give him uh, four or five yards. You'll never catch him. Face mask. And it's on uh, Michigan. Keith, Ty Streets is uh, playing a good First football ball. game this afternoon. Face you look mask. at the numbers and you think to yourself, well, three for 38 and one touchdown is not a big deal. But that one touchdown is very important because 
people out the, the offensive unit has the confidence he'll go up and get it for you you don't fiddle around and play around and play tricks down on the goal line you know you can score the other is his threat of going deep you know he's been so good so far this year he's made the big play he's kept that secondary in check by his threat of going deep and, and Bob I always knew wide receivers had to have good hands to catch the ball but good legs because he used his legs to catch that last pass. He kind of skied on, huh? He went up there, stuck it between his legs, and squeezed it. Well, Might be somebody I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Fargus again carrying. That was uh, been first down and 20 because he wound up being after the five-yard gain, a 15-yard penalty. I don't know if you can follow that elusive track of math or not. There you see a little bit of the size <laughs> difference when Streets was walking next to uh, Backlund. You add into that that, that Streets uh, has got a pretty good vertical leap. Swanee, what was your vertical leap? My vertical leap was wherever the ball was, I was getting there. Uh -huh. Yeah, we didn't measure it when I played. That's we measured we measured your ability to get it wherever it was. It's called football fast. And that's right. <laughs> that's right. Like a guy never getting caught from behind. Second down and 17. Brady runs away from the pressure for a moment. Then uh, they leave some footprints as the Lions track him. He'll get up to the 25 and lose a couple of more yards. Tom Brady needs to uh, get down and not allow those, uh, not allow Brandon Short and these linebackers to get a free shot at him. Yeah, you got Scioli, Short, and Arrington all hunting you. Yeah. Man, I'd be going in there with the Gophers. Yeah, he drilled him. Third down and 19 now. Knight goes with it and completes it to Marcus Knight. And Knight's got a first down at midfield. No wow. pressure on the quarterback at all, Keith. No pressure on him. Marcus Knight's first catch of the day, but as Bob said, the play was made by the big uglies in the trenches. Watch the offensive line. There's only three-man rush, so you've got five blocking three. And he just uh, waits and picks out his man and picks him out. Little things in the sum add up. To victory. That was one of those things that adds up right there. Here's another one. Aaron Shea making another catch. That's his. Oh, they call that one off, I think. Yeah. Didn't hold it. Keith and Bob, I just want to throw in here that Tom Brady comes from a, from a long tradition of passing high school teams. He went to Sarah High School in San Mateo. They had a quarterback there in the 60s and 70s by the name of Jesse Freitas, who uh, went on to San Diego State and set some NCAA records. I know this for a fact because uh, we helped establish that passing <laughs> history at Sarah High School. That's my alma mater. Yeah. I told yeah. the boys back home, I said, if Tom Brady plays well for the old Padres, we give the Padres a plug. So go Sarah Padres. Okay, Swanee. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a point in time when Tom Brady was about ready to leave this Michigan program. Uh, he was talking to Brian uh, about leaving uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago. He didn't... Uh, didn't know where he was going to fit into the scheme of things. And um, hey, why don't we make Swanee the fundraising chairman next year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he spread it around a little bit uh, better today. His wide receivers have seven and the running back six. Tight ends are four. The thing he hasn't been doing is hitting the running backs. They, uh, that was the big difference from, from this year to last year. But good, uh, good distribution this, this game. Second down and 10. Vargas. Flashing over the right side. And one other thing about uh, Vargas, he was a very, very, very good defensive back. And uh, anytime they want to put him in the secondary, I'll bet you that he'd. Uh, you know, he's. Uh, I, I bet he could play because he's on. He's on the punt coverage team as one of the burners on the outside. Yep. And he gets down. He's tough. I, I see him flying by, coming back, fighting off these guys, making tackles. Williams is back on the field. We got movement, or we got offsides. It's a dead ball foul. 
Dead ball foul is no option. It's in dead ball. Full start on the offense. Five yards. Repeat. Third down. Michigan. That's Jeremy Tuman. A, a lot of the penalties and the and, and the uh, turnovers and the mistakes that the Michigan offense has made uh, this year, and they, they they're making a few of them now. But in the first half, they didn't. In the last five games, when they were winning ugly, I think comes from the change of when you change a center and a quarterback. Your two backs in the backfield. That's a that's the center of your offense, and all the guys that make the calls have graduated. Third down, 11 now. Brady's pass is off. It is Diallo Judson. And they say no. The field judge right there on top of it with Anthony King defending said no. Well, let's see if the defensive back sees the ball. Here's a look at King, number 19. He's only 5'8". King got his hand in there. I think that's a good call. Don't need a flag there. Benson in to punt. Winding down toward the end of the third quarter. Benson's kick is out. It's a liner. He got a little room, but he fumbled it. And he may lose it. He does lose it. Michigan gets it. Rob Rennes covers the ball. Rob Renis is the nose tackle on defense. Was a very good high school wrestler. A poor punt causes the fumble. Fargus 34 is there to knock, knock him away from it. And there's Renis. He snapped it. He went downfield and covered it. You know, Michigan came in, talking about turnovers, Keith, Michigan came in 91st in the country in the turnover margin. Well, Penn State has given it to them four times today. And that's causing Joe's head to drop just a little bit. Well, one of the things that Jim Herman told us yesterday is he was going to tell his guys that we need three takeaways on defense uh, tomorrow to win this game. He says, we need two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Well, he's gotten four turnovers altogether. Second down and seven for Michigan. The ball is at the Penn State 16-yard line. Nittany Lions came in with only the loss to Ohio State, barring their record. Having troubles in Ann Arbor. In the middle, it's Clarence Williams, and he's tripped as he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. And the third quarter is history. So after three, it's Michigan 20, Penn State nothing. Back after this message and a word from our ABC station. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. We go to the final quarter of play, and the score is a bit of a surprise. 20 to nothing, Michigan, and they have pretty well controlled the football game. They had a great goal line stand when they stopped uh, Penn State on the one-yard line. They opened with an offense that was moving fast tempo, bang, bang, and scored first, and uh, haven't looked back so far. Penn State, that's been a very good-looking team over the last six weeks, Suddenly now in a bit of trouble. As Brady puts it in the air for Tuman, and it's intercepted by David Macklin. You go to the well one time too yeah. many, and he'll make you pay. Now, he, I'm sure he didn't see him, or he wouldn't have thrown that ball. He threw it. He was covered all the way. It's going to be put down at the one or two, somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, Tuman grabbed him and threw him back into the end zone, but the ball is marked dead at the one-yard line. Macklin number 27 came in from the right side of the screen and I don't know if he thought he was throwing it over Macklin but that was a poor throw and you're entitled to some of those I mean a quarterback's going to throw a lot of balls they aren't all going to be great ones so they're down 20 to nothing and they're sitting on their one yard line looking in the far horizon at hallelujah land it's a ways
Well, after the fumbled uh, punt, Michigan comes in and throws an interception, so uh, Penn State has to go 99 yards. McCoo is in the backfield, so is Sarah Melly. Sarah Melly is hit down by Ian Gold just about the line of scrimmage. Just about the time he turned up field, number 20 popped him. These Michigan linebackers are not so widely heralded, perhaps, but they will put a hat on you. That's a good point. And as we mentioned, this Michigan defense has, has outscored their last five opponents in the second half. The defense for Michigan has outscored their opponents in the second half, the last five games, six to three. See, Deontay Jones asking the crowd for a little help here. We got him pinned back. Let's make it hard on him. The ball is handed off to Sarah Melly, and Sarah Melly will turn it upfield and get hit by William Peterson at about the seven yard line. Tommy Hendricks was injured, a hip injury in the first half, and has not returned. Main thing here, Sarah Melly wants to get out of the end zone and then get upfield and get some yardage. They've got to go to beyond the 11 for their first down, just beyond it. So they're looking at third down and four. Kevin Thompson. Throws out of the end zone complete to Sarah Melly, and he's right on the first down marker. I think you'll move the chains on that one. Ian Gold made the tackle. That was a nice play and well defensed. This is a big first down just to get it out a little bit. 36, Sarah Melly is going to slide out into the flat, and number 20, the linebacker, is going to run right with him. One of the things we saw last week in the Ohio State Indiana game were linebackers that could run with the back yeah. and they handled Randall L pretty well on first down they go to McCoo he's missed in the backfield turns up field fights his way to the 18 yard line and we'll fight our way off to New York City and John Saunders. Keith Purdue quarterback Drew Brees continues the onslaught. Three yards to Gabe Cox here, his fifth touchdown pass of the day, his 29th of the season, tying Bobby Hoying of Ohio State for the most in a single season. Keith, back to you. Well, Drew Brees is rewriting all the record. You got to mention Joe Tiller. Yep. Great job. On second down, Kevin Thompson's pass to Sarah Melly. Right again on the marker, right on it. He goes down on the ball, falling hard, and that's a pretty good way to get the wind knocked yeah. out of you. Sarah he's Melly. got another first down. Yeah. Sarah Melly is a fullback that wasn't expected to play this year, and Joe put him in. And Fran Ganner told me this week, he says, uh, I grade all of the receivers and the quarterbacks and the backs, and he says, hardly any of them ever score 100. Well, Sarah Melly scored 104 percent in last week's game. He says, there's some ways that you can do extra things to get over over 100. This is McCoo. And they finally run him out of bounds. So the Penn State ground game now starting to uh, pick up some real estate as Greg Ransom shoved him out. Next on ABC Sports, stay tuned for regional action. Our college football doubleheader. Big Ten, you've got Michigan State, Ohio State, ACC, Virginia, FSU, Pac-10, Washington, Oregon, Big 12, Oklahoma State, Texas. Check your local listing. Ball's on the 34-yard line after that first down, and the referee, Kimmerling, flips the flag into the air and calls for an illegal substitution. Yeah, well, Joe's getting looking pretty grim now. He's not happy about the state of things. But you know what? The best days for this team are in front of them. Oh, no question. This is a very young football team. They only lose two starters off the defense, Michigan State. I mean, uh, Penn State. Look at this play. Wow. Joaquin Fizel. That's from Fort Valley, Georgia, that, would not be denied. Yeah, his second sack on the day, number 90. 
Play it on a sore ankle, too, because he had come out earlier lifting yeah. a little and bit. The, and the only way he gets that sack, Keith, is because Gold and Sword are coming free up the middle. And Thompson took off around in. Thompson's not getting a lot of help. Now second down and 26. And we've got 11 and a half minutes to play in the game, and it's 20 to nothing. The Michigan Wolverines are looking to win their seventh game in a row. That's a nice run by McCoo. He's a good looking freshman back. The pundits will have a ball with McCoo. MCCWO. You think of this, think of the headlines. And I think there's going to be a lot of headlines about that youngster. I do too. Third down and 20 now. Look at Hall come up the middle. He threw it. Now they're going to call him down. He got some arm motion out of it, but Jim Kimmerling's not by at it, and he marks him down at the 15 yard line. Hall 56 just doing a little twist with the, the other defensive lineman. I don't know, they ruled it a sack? Yep. Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah, that's his second sack on the day and a block kick. So the lines are backed up on fourth and 29. Michigan will get good field position out of this. And they let it go, and they're going to mark that out of bounds on the Penn State side of the field at the 46-yard line. Ten minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the game. Another opportunity staring the Michigan Wolverines down right here. They have the ball first down at the Penn State 46 yard line to begin this possession. And they lead 20 to nothing. And the clock is now an ally. And they hand the ball to Fargus. And Fargus pops in there for three yards. Now let's take a look at the Home Depot coaches fact. The longest current conference win streaks, conference win streaks. Lloyd Carr here at Michigan with 14. Bill Fulmer over to Tennessee with 13. Bill Snyder at Kansas State and Bob Toledo UCLA with 12. Mm -hmm. Is your uh, national coach of the year last year after a great season here at uh, Michigan? Oh, he wore out a pair of shoes on the rubber chicken tour. <laughs> Everybody in the world wanted him. Uh huh. You know what I want to do, Bob? I want to bronze this chair I've been sitting in all day. Why? I mean, it, it paralyzes you. <laughs> I mean, it's special. Mm. Well, we can we can get that handled. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six. Hand it off to Fargus. Fresh legs. Fresh legs against a, a defense that may be getting a little tired. Derek Fox comes up and pops him, and he's a yard short of the first down. If Lloyd Carr was telling his troops if they win their last uh, three conference games, they're going to the Rose Bowl. Well, they're winning this game, Penn State. Wisconsin comes in next week. They're undefeated and in, uh, in, in ranked in the top ten. And then the big trip to Ohio State, where Ohio State is number one. Michigan, let's see. what's The record is uh, Michigan has won eight out of ten games with a tie. Eight out of the last ten, Ohio State. Uh, uh oh, Arrington got caught in the neutral zone. Yep. I do believe. Well, the point I'm making is that uh, when when uh, when Michigan goes to Ohio State, Ohio State's record. You know, they see the maize and blue. They start uh, getting a little of fever. Michigan's <laughs> Michigan has beaten them eight out of ten times. Ohio State's only won one of those ten, and there was a tie in there. Yep. Caught him in the neutral zone, so they'll move it, and it'll be Michigan first down. Trying to anticipate. But you know, before this game, Keith, and before this offense for Michigan today, uh, they had won ugly. They were 5-0 and in the conference. Uh, you know, they really weren't, weren't playing that well. 
lots of turnovers, lots of penalties. Defense carried the team. Time of possession was not good. All of the things you look for in an offense, you know, really wasn't there. But today, they've had uh, time of possession in their favor, uh, lots of plays, uh, lots of energy. And this is a good defense they're playing, folks. I guarantee you it is. That ball is handed down to about the 30-yard line with Fargus carry. This Penn State defense that they're playing, Keith, was fifth in the nation coming in in scoring defense. Yeah, but here they are now. they got to go to that adrenaline well next week, too, because they're playing a tough bunch yep. from Wisconsin. Yep. And then, of course, you don't worry about Ohio State. That'll take care of itself. Mm -hmm. But that game next week, look out. Yep. Look out. We saw Wisconsin uh, earlier against uh, Ohio, uh, Iowa, and uh, I think they're pretty good. I do, too. Barry Alvarez does it his way. He says, I, I am who I am, and this is the way we play, and uh, they're conservative. They run the ball. They take time off the clock, and they don't turn it over. On second down, it's Anthony Thomas going outside. And they collar him two yards short of the first down. LeVar Arrington ran him down. I think LeVar Arrington is the best linebacker that I have seen this year, Keith. Well, he plays, he's outside backer. It's a different thing than playing in the middle. I'll tell you, in the middle, that Chris Claiborne at Southern California. Claiborne is good. Uh, Katz and Moyer is good. Uh, Brandon Flor Short. Florida's uh, got one down there that's awful good, too. Yes. Javon Curse no, no, he's good. in Florida. Ball is just inside the 25 now, where it's third down and two. As Jerry Sandusky. He was walking down the hall this morning. He was smiling. He was friendly. And, and he is not smiling. And he is not friendly right now because his defense is getting tired and just yielded a first down to Michigan. A defense has been out there a long time today. Skate America International. Nicole Bobbick on the ice for the first international competition of the season at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ABC Sports. And brace yourself, Nicole, the international group will be judging it. Ah. Uh, she'll do fine. Yeah, I reckon. First down. Ball is on the 18-yard line. And they're making, they're requiring real estate now up the middle of the field. Vargas again carrying the ball. The middle of the offensive line for Michigan, uh, Zach Adamy graduated. He was the center. Chris Zeman was the right guard. He was hurt early in the year. So the center and right guard are new. David Brant and Steve Frazier has been playing in there, doing a nice job today. Kai Streets has come off now. David Terrell and... Uh, the Marquise Walker is another one of those freshmen. He's from Syracuse. And they like him a lot. Kevin Bryant, the junior out of Farmington Hills, he's in the game now, number 22. And they run it with. Oh, oh. welcome uh, to Big Ten football, Justin. Mr. The name is Short. Brandon <laughs> yeah. Short. Yes. <laughs> pip, pip. <laughs> Feel like a truck hit you. Yeah. That is not a pretty picture when you see, when you get the ball and all of your guys are moving left to right and then all those white shirts and that big 43 comes. He's a good one. 15-yard line where it's third down and seven now. Crowd very quiet. Very quiet. It's 111,019 here. You wouldn't know it. And very quiet. This is Thomas. Around the corner he goes. First down inside the five. First and goal. He was running behind big old Steve Frazier from Kingswood, Texas. And it is Frazier who is hurt. Well, that's the offensive line that I was talking about. Sixth right there. Frazier just wiped out the defender and gave uh, Thomas the room to get around the corner. And old Steve, he's going to rub it off and stay in there. You always want to be in when the team gets in the end zone for the celebration. Vargas is out of there. The fresh legs, and now Thomas has had a good long rest, and then he's in there feeling good. And by Steve, he's going to fight his way down to about the two-yard line. 
Adam Adkins has finally replaced Frazier along the line because somebody saw him uh, hobbling a bit and got him out of there. Michigan got their running game back in order today, Keith. They rushing for over 135 yards, 138 to be exact. And this is a door slammer right here. Yeah. If they stick it in the end zone with uh, less than four minutes to play, to make it 27 to nothing. Well, I think the door is already closed. Now, Mountain's a little too high. Nope, didn't get in. Did not quite get in on second down, so there will be third down and a foot or so. Ten plays and all on the ground. John Jansen, number 77, is the captain of that uh, offensive group. He was just a little short. Jansen has started. Uh, Jansen has started 45 games, Keith. He was a uh, two-time captain of uh, the Wolverines and a newlywed. And a newlywed. Frazier's back in now at that guard spot on third down and goal. Thomas, there's your touchdown. Not in my wildest did I anticipate this kind of domination at Penn State. Nor last year's game when it was 34 to 8 at Penn State. Frank Beckman, who is the broadcaster for the Michigan team, came in for the game and said, what do you think? And I said what I thought. And now I've decided I don't know a damn thing about anything. <laughs> Here's the kick by Feely and it's good. So it's 27 to nothing. The Michigan Wolverines with 303 to play. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Sleep in. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. And Chile, a proud sponsor of ABC's College Football. Beautiful aerial views today, courtesy of Tostitos, proud sponsor of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, this year's College Football National Championship. Kickoff by Epstein, now from the 35. High hanger, deep. Oh, they're going to come with it. Maku. It would be in specific terms considered a mistake. Sprackens, the backup linebacker, redshirt freshman, on the head. Nailed him on the eight-yard line. What's your idea of the perfect minivan? Next Saturday, number four UCLA meets Washington, or Nebraska faces number two Kansas State, plus other regional action. Well, you can read it. Penn State shut out last almost 12 years ago. 11 years ago. 10 to nothing by Pittsburgh. Well, I don't know how to swallow that kind of stuff. Doesn't go down well with them. On first down from, call it officially, the nine-yard line, Richard Casey is on the field at quarterback now, relieving Kevin Thompson. Throws the pass, a uh, rope to Corey Jones, and it is incomplete. Casey, 6'1", 205, sophomore from Hoboken, New Jersey, and he's a very good athlete. Can do a lot of things, including run. Penn State now beginning to put in some of the younger people. Bruce Branch is out there now. So you're going to see a lot of people, I think, over the next couple of minutes or so. We've got 249 to play in the ball game. 27 to nothing. Michigan leading. Season them. Put a little salt and pepper on them as yep. time goes on. Yep. Casey. And throws it low, and it's incomplete. It's a tough day for Kevin Thompson. Uh, 
Not only this week against uh, Michigan on the road, but he also had to go into Columbus against Ohio State on the road, and that's that's two tough orders right there. Michigan defense. Let me show you what they did today, Keith. They forced two, four turnovers. They had four sacks. Held the uh, Penn State uh, completion percentage to 38 percent, and only two of 11 on third down conversions were the Nittany Lions. Dominating performance. They still haven't allowed a point in the fourth quarter. Casey finally runs out of room and throws an interception. Threw it right to Clint Copenhaver. Copenhaver, linebacker returning from injury. He better get hurt again if he doesn't get off the field. And jumping all over him. He's a very popular player and a very good player. And uh, he was just right there waiting for it. Copenhager, number 43, was a starter until he was injured last week, just working himself back into the lineup, just kind of uh, keeping good vision on the quarterback and, and says, I'll take it. At 2.36 to play in the game. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report with scores and highlights from across the country. Arkansas Razorbacks were rolling along, leading Ole Miss a while ago. Whoa, big, sorry. Henson is in the ball game now. Drew Henson, a uh, freshman from Brighton, Michigan. Uh, you talk about people coming in with all the bugles blowing. <laughs> I mean, this was one of them. He has a contract with the Yankees. And they think that he can be a big timer in either sport. Saw him at practice the other day, and he throws the ball well, and he moves well. The, you know, the, the key thing, Keith, is the mental part of it. Uh, the mentality for baseball is a lot different than the mentality for a football quarterback. And, can he uh, hit the deuce? Well, that you know, maybe he can hit the deuce, but maybe he uh, maybe he can't handle all the study and the preparation, the mental aspect of it. There's been a lot of guys come down the pike that have been great athletes. They could throw the ball through a wall, could throw it 80 yards that never made it and I'm not saying that uh, Henson can't make it but I'm just saying it remains to be seen but he certainly has all of the uh, credentials physically coming in. Second down and 12. And this is Walter Cross. Carrying the ball. And not much there for him either. So we're just playing out playing out the story now as uh, the Michigan Wolverines at home have dominated this football game. This really throws the Big Ten. This sets up the Big Ten gives Michigan a lot of confidence going. They have Wisconsin coming here next week. They'll be undefeated if they can knock Wisconsin off. Then they really set up that final game in a, in a Columbus with Ohio State. Uh, that will be a big one. I might go a day early just to sit and think. Yeah, about we'll it. be there. Henson's pass is thrown. Thrown short, thrown behind the line of scrimmage, as a matter of fact, and uh, caught, but uh, for naught. Tom Brady had a good day. Uh, two touchdowns and one poor throw for the interception. But this is his first year of playing. This is his ninth start. And uh, the more he plays, uh, the better he'll get. I think I'll go to supper with Don Canham tonight because he'll be happy. Maybe he'll buy the former athletic director here. Henson <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh -huh. hands it to Cross. Cross is being tracked down by the Nittany Lions, Aaron Gatton. And he brings him down. It'll be fourth down now. And uh, 50. Uh, that was fourth down. And 56 seconds remaining in the ball game as we're doing our housekeeping here. There's always a lot of little things to do with the conclusion of the day. Like this. And so it is the crowd of 111,019. The majority of them, obviously, uh, Michigan fans, will go home happy tonight as their team has won a seventh consecutive game. Penn State's record will drop off to a second loss. Michigan, that ball is bounced in front of the intended receiver, Luke.
Michigan with Wisconsin coming next week. Wisconsin is undefeated. Ohio State the week after in Columbus. The Wolverines, as Lloyd Carr was trying to tell his team this week, control your future. If you win all the games between here and the end of the season, you very likely will go back to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, well, they don't have to win in Hawaii, but Hawaii is, uh, hasn't won a game all year. Yeah, but still, it could be a sinkhole. You go over there, get yourself sunburned, the shoulder pads hurt, and you get a stomach ache, and all that kind of stuff. A lot of strange things can happen to you when you're wandering around in the South Pacific. Hit a sinkhole, did you say? <laughs> yeah. Omar Easy is now in the ball game, and uh, Mon is uh, is developing. He's coming along. A big fellow from Jamaica who learned to play football up in Everett, Massachusetts. What a what a proper name, huh? Easy. <laughs> You see him run it, though, and he runs it easy. Oh, and easy. Hey, Mon. He's in time will be a load. Clock rolling right along now. Less than 20 seconds. This one is just about history. Casey wants to go big with it. Can't find anybody. Now he says, if you block that fellow, I'll run for a while. And he finally runs out of bounds up around midfield with uh, five seconds to play in the ball game. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan here uh, with our usual crew, and we're happy and hope that you enjoyed the ball game. Bit of a surprise, no question about it, as Michigan dominates it by a score of 27 to nothing. And it's a surprise because the way Michigan had been playing. And Penn State had been playing. Exactly. Yep. Penn State had been playing very well. Yep. So they both teams now will have something to chew on over the weekend as they settle in for classes and. Uh, the preparation for the next game. Casey puts it up. And it is long and gone, and the game is over. Final score, Michigan 27 and Penn State nothing. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Mac Morrison, linebacker for Penn State. Mac had 12 tackles today. For Michigan, Tom Brady, 17 of 30, 224 yards and two touchdowns. Chevrolet donation made to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and help those who need it. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. And so from the big house in Arbor, in Ann Arbor, it's a goodbye as we go to John Saunders and Todd Blackledge in New York.